Namaste and welcome to Yogami. I'm Malika, your trainer for this session. We're going to start by taking the hands in Namaste, keeping the chest open and taking a few long deep breaths in this posture. Keeping the neck, spine and the head all in a straight line and the chin parallel to the ground. Building our breath awareness here. and tuning the mind to the breath. We gently release. Let's start with some warm up. So let's begin with our warm up routine. Placing the right hand on the left knee and taking the left arm behind the back. Using the right elbow as an anchor and twisting, looking to your left. Really opening the left elbow, trying to look back all the way. Coming back to the center, placing the left hand on the right knee, right hand goes behind the back, opening the right shoulder, twisting and looking back, getting a nice stretch and twist for the spine here. Coming back to the center and taking the legs forward with the toes pointing inwards, inhaling, lengthen. And exhaling, drop down all the way into the legs, trying to bring the chest to the thighs and the nose to the bottom of the knees here. We want to keep the elbows bent and really give the spine some length here. As you take the body in deeper and drop the head into the knees or go as low as you can. Feeling that on your hamstrings and keeping the toes pointing inwards or upwards. Coming back up and getting into position for cat and camel, aligning the knees to the hips and the wrists to the shoulders, inhaling to cat and exhaling taking the nose in towards the chest, creating a nice round here for the spine, inhaling, arching your back, looking upwards and exhaling, taking the nose in towards the chest, feeling that hollow in the belly, inhaling, arching, looking up, exhaling, creating the hump of a camel and taking the nose in. Inhaling, arching, exhaling to camel, really flowing and allowing the movements to flow with your breath here. Continuing this for a few more breaths, feeling a nice stretch in the spine. Feeling a nice stretch around the upper back in camel. Playing with the position of your feet a little bit. And coming back to the center here. Whenever you complete, you can do this about 8 to 10 times and then rest the hips back. Lengthen the arms, drop the head down and relax in Balasan or child's pose. Extremely relaxing posture, great for your spine. Releasing any tension around the upper back, around the arms and slowly getting out of our child's pose. Sitting back in Vajrasan on your mat. That completes our warm up. And now let's move on to Paschimottanasan. People with current back issues and sciatica should not practice it. So, people with problems like slip disc that have come up recently should not practice this posture until they're completely cured. Also, pregnant women and people with liver and spleen issues should avoid this posture. We're going to start by sitting in Dandasan with our toes pointing inwards and our body in a straight line. 
Maintaining a 90 degree angle, inhaling, we take our arms up, interlacing the fingers. Exhaling, we drop the spine down. And if your hands can't reach all the way forward, you can also place them to the lowest point or near the ankles, wherever you can reach. We want to try to lengthen our spine here, really going forward, lengthening from the crown to the tailbone. Ideally, keeping our elbows bent so that the strength of our arms helps us take the spine in even deeper. Inhaling, we come up, arms and head together and take the arms in a backward rotation. Now, the benefits of this posture are that it stimulates the liver, the kidneys, the ovaries and the uterus and also aids with digestion and stress relief. Next, we're going to practice Baddha Konasana. The contraindications for this posture are that people with any sort of knee conditions should not practice it. And if your knees are higher than your hips, you can also sit on a block. We're going to start by sitting in Bhadrasan, joining the feet together in Namaste and keeping the hands around the big toes. Elbows are bent and spine is straight. Holding this posture for a few moments with a soft gaze forward. Gently pushing the knees downwards, placing the elbows onto the thighs and dropping the head down. Lengthening from the crown of the head to the tailbone. And from here, we're going to take our arms forward and really continue to lengthen. Staying in this posture for a few seconds. The benefits of this asana are that it helps open the hip and groin area, also improves digestion. This asana also relieves urinary disorders, regulates the menstrual flow. It is also great for kidney and bladder health and good for pregnant women. Gently walking back up with your hands and releasing the posture. Relax for a few seconds before we move on to the next asana. So let's get into Matsya asana. Today we're going to be practicing the beginner variation using the yoga brick. The contraindications for the same would be people with high or low blood pressure, migraine, insomnia or a serious back or neck injuries. Starting by sitting in Dandasan. Gently taking the brick and placing it at the small of the back. Lying down and dropping the upper body to the mat and folding the legs in a cross-legged posture. Taking the arms up and placing the hands on opposite elbows. Resting here. This posture helps improve the breathing, stretches and opens the intercostal muscles, gives a beautiful stretch to the legs and the arms. And is a great posture for women while they're menstruating. Helps to remove fatigue, so can be practiced in the middle of a big long yoga flow as well. Come back to a comfortable sitting position. Next, we're going to practice Nokasan or the boat pose. People with low blood pressure, severe headaches and migraines, people suffering from chronic diseases or spinal disorders are recommended to not practice this yoga pose. Women should also avoid it during pregnancy and the first two days of the menstrual cycle. Gonna start by sitting and finding the point of the tailbone, balancing the body there and lifting the legs up to form a 90 degree angle with the toes pointed inwards and the fingertips pointed forward. Keeping the abdominal muscles tight. You can also use the help of a wall to practice this posture if you need to. From here, we're going to lengthen the legs and go into a full variation with the toes pointing away from us and the fingertips pointing away too. Maintaining an angle for the body and keeping the abdomen tight. Taking long deep breaths here. Maintaining your balance by looking straight at one point and gently releasing the posture and coming back to Sukhasan. Nokasan strengthens the abdominal muscles. It strengthens the muscles of the arms, thighs and shoulders. It also helps in regulating blood flow at sugar levels. Next, we're going to be practicing Uttrasana or the camel pose. 
people with high blood pressure and severe fatigue should avoid this posture. If you have any sort of spine related conditions, make sure to maintain the extension through the spine rather than bending the spine. And start by sitting in Vajrasan and from here lift the body up and take the hands at the lower back arch and look up. This is the beginner variation of this asan. Now if you feel up to it, we want to maintain the toes and the heels in the same line and place the hands onto the ankles we lift up from the chest and the pelvis really dropping the head back down, maintaining the alignment of the shoulders and the hands. We're going to stay here for a few moments as per your comfort. And now only if you're comfortable, you can even relax the feet all the way down and even deeper your extension of the camel pose. Again, we're dropping the head down, opening the chest up to the ceiling and really releasing from the neck, dropping it back. Taking the support of your hands on the lower back, we come back up. Drop the hips back into the feet, back in Vajras and exhale, we drop down all the way to a nice child's pose or Balasan. The reason for doing this is to give the spine a nice counteractive bend. Since we did a back bend, we want to nicely release through a calming, fatigue relieving forward bend. Gently coming back up and releasing the asana. Uttarasana strengthens the legs and the back and the spine. It helps with the mobility in the shoulders and the upper back. It stretches the front of the body and also strengthens the arms. People with any sort of a backache, shoulder pain, knee ache or hip pain should definitely avoid this posture. If you have sciatica, then crossing the knee may not be good as there will be pressure on the sciatic nerve. Pregnant women should also avoid this posture. I'm going to start by sitting in Sukhasan. And from here, I'm going to take my left leg in a little more so that my sole of the left foot is near the right hip and vice versa. Both my knees are aligned and this is how we'll clasp the fingers behind. I'm going to take my left hand from the top and the right hand from below, clasping the fingers. If you're not able to interlace or clasp the fingers, you can also hold on to your shirt or use a yoga belt for the same. Trying to keep the soles of the feet pointing upwards, holding this posture, looking straight at a point with a soft gaze forward. And from here, we're going to shift legs, take the right leg below the left and make sure our knees are aligned. The soles of the feet pointing upwards. We're going to take our right hand below and the left hand on the top again, interlacing the fingers and looking straight at a point. Holding this posture as per comfort. It helps to relieve stress and anxiety. It also stimulates the kidney and leads to a more elastic body. Gormukhasana is also used to treat sciatic pain and cure stiff shoulders. It is also an exercise that leads to full body toning, improved posture and helps to open the hips up. And gently releasing the asana and coming back to Sukhasana. Next, we will be practicing Malasan or the Garland Pose. People with knee and ankle injuries should avoid this posture. We begin with our feet at hip distance width. Keeping the toes pointed outward slightly, I'm taking my hands in Namaste, getting into a deep squat right here, pushing the root of the hips into the ground. My heels are on the mat. If they don't reach, you can continue to push them down or even use the support of a wall. Adjusting the arms so the elbows are pushing the knees outwards, getting a beautiful stretch here for the thighs, the groin, the hips, the ankles and the torso. This posture also helps to increase blood circulation and blood flow to the pelvis. Gently releasing the posture using my arms and getting back to child's pose or balasan. Resting here for a few moments before we gently release the posture. Next we will be practicing Shalabhasan or the locust pose. People with acute back pain, slip discs and sciatica should not practice it. People also who have a prolapsed uterus or any sort of menstrual pain should avoid this posture. Sitting in Sukhasan, 
I'm going to slowly start to lie down on my stomach, keeping the arms on either side. Staying here, from here I take my hands right above the hips and I interlace my fingers. I lift the upper body and the lower body together and really stretch the arms backwards. My shoulders and chest are opening and I'm holding this posture here. This posture helps increase the appetite, strengthens the thighs and the abdomen and improves the blood circulation to the lower spine and neck. Gently releasing the asan. Turning to your left side, taking the support of your hands and coming back to a seated posture. Let's go to the next asana. Next we'll be practicing Dhanurasana or the bow pose. People with a neck injury or suffering from spondylitis people suffering from ulcers in the stomach or from hernia, people also suffering with a back injury should avoid this posture. We're going to start by lying down on the tummy, keeping the body in a straight line and the arms onto the either side. From here, we're going to fold the legs in and take our hands on the ankles. Inhaling, I'm going to lift up keeping the chest open and allowing the shoulders to be pushed backwards. Lifting the neck up. It is normal to feel a slight bob in the body initially, getting that nice arch in the spine. We're going to hold this posture for about 30 to 45 seconds. The bow pose is a great stretch for the spine, abdomen, hip flexors and biceps. Thanurasan works in many ways to stretch out the body and its parts, stimulating its organs to perform at their optimum. Gently releasing, taking the support of your hands and coming back to Sukhasan. Let's go to the next asana. Next, we're going to be practicing Pavan Mukt Asana or wind relieving posture. People with abdominal inflammation, cardiac conditions, hernia, piles, women on their period or women that are pregnant should avoid this yoga pose. We're going to start by lying on our back. Comfortably here. Fold the knees in and take the thighs into the chest, hugging the legs into the chest. Now you can either place your nose, your chin or your forehead as per your comfort in the middle of your knees. Deep hug here, really hugging the legs in, in Pavan Muktasan. We can hold this posture from 30 seconds up to 2 minutes, depending on your capacity. The biggest benefit of this posture is that it is great for digestion and helps release any unnecessary gases in the body. It also helps to get rid of stubborn belly fat. Favorable movement in cases of flabby abdomen, subnormal functions of the abdominal viscera and pelvic organs. This posture also helps provide relief in case of chronic constipation and a sluggish liver. It offers a deep internal pressure massage and inculcates a feeling of letting go. And gently starting to release the posture, turning to your side, taking the support of your arms and coming back to a seated posture. Next, we're going to practice Setu Bandha Asan or the Bridge Pose. The contraindications for the same are people with back and neck injuries and also pregnant women. So if you fall under these categories, please avoid this asan. We're going to start by lying down on the spine with the feet kept close to the hips. Taking the arms on either side and lifting up, taking the pressure on the shoulders and not on the neck. We're going to lift the chest and the pelvis up towards the ceiling, keeping the glutes tight. Now we can also hold the ankles here or simply place the arms on either side with the palms facing downwards. So you can feel free to choose whichever variation. If possible, you can take the right leg up, keeping the toes reaching towards the ceiling and taking the left foot on the toes as well. We can stay here for a few seconds only if you feel like intensifying the asan and trying a variation. Slowly repeating the same thing on the left side, we're going to lift the left leg up, toes pointing upwards and stay there. Taking the right toes 
to the mat and lifting the heel off. Gently dropping back down and releasing the asan. Turning to your left side, supporting the body with the arms and coming back to Sukhasan. Let's go to the next asana. Next, we'll be practicing alternate nostril breathing or Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Children under 12 years of age should not practice it and cardiac patients should not exceed their time capacity when they're practicing this pranayam. We're going to start by sitting upright in Sukhasan and taking the right hand bending the middle finger and the index finger inwards, joining the ring finger and the pinky and keeping the thumb outside. We're going to use the right thumb to block the right nostril, inhale through the left and exhale through the right nostril. Inhale right, two, three, four, block, exhale left, two, three, four, Inhale, left, two, three, four. Exhale, right, two, three, four. Inhale, right, two, three, four. Exhale, left, two, three, four. Inhale, left, two, three, four. Exhale, right, two, three, four. Inhale, right, two, three, four. Exhale, left, two, three, four. The benefits of this pranayam are that it causes favorable pressure changes in the lungs for better oxygenation of the body. It balances the energies in our system and helps us cope with pains and aches. Two, three, four. Release and relax. You can practice up to five to eight rounds per day and gradually increase it every week. Next, we're going to be practicing the pranayam brahmari or the humming bee. We're going to start by sitting in Sukhasan using the index fingers to block the ears. You can also keep the hands right here and push the little flap in to block the ears. Inhaling, we're going to take a deep breath expanding the belly and exhaling with the humming bee sound feeling the vibration in the throat. Blocking the ears. Inhale again, expanding the belly. Exhale, bringing the awareness to the vibration in the throat and blocking the ears. Now the humming sound doesn't have to be extremely loud, it can also be just a soft sound. What's important is we keep the body still and the facial features relaxed. Brahmari is good for the nervous system. It restores the elasticity of the lungs and also beneficial in asthmatic conditions. Practiced daily, it reduces a meditative state and quietens the mind. It is beneficial in relieving from hypertension and stress. It relaxes the mind and lowers stress and reduces tension and anxiety. It also helps to reduce anger and frustration. And releasing the pranayam. Next, we'll be practicing Nadi Shodhana or Anulom Vilom using retention. Children under the age of 12 years should not practice it and cardiac patients should not exceed their time capacity. We are going to be practicing this pranayam with retention. We are going to start by sitting in Sukhasan, taking the right hand and bending in the middle finger and the index finger. Taking the right thumb and blocking the right nostril, inhaling through the left, blocking both and exhaling through the right nostril and coming back. 
great. We're going to take the right hand and practice six rounds of the same. We're going to keep the duration of the inhale, the retention and the exhale the same. making sure to keep the body still and the breath flowy, facial features relaxed and no quick and jerky movements in the breathing. Nadi Shodhana causes favorable pressure changes in the lungs for better oxygenation of the body. The practitioner experiences quietude and inner harmony. It also has a sedative effect on the nervous system and helps to improve concentration. and gently releasing. Next we'll be practicing the corpse pose or Shavasana also known as the dead body posture. We're going to start by lying down on the back with the legs wider than hip distance apart and the arms on either side, palms facing upwards. Keeping the eyes shut and starting to feel the weight of the body on the ground, really surrendering to the force of gravity, scanning the entire body for any tension or tightness and releasing it into the mat, softening the facial features as we begin to consciously relax each part of the body from the tips of the toes all the way to the crown of the head. Taking all the awareness to the toes, relaxing the toes, relaxing the soles of the feet, softening the ankles, relaxing the inner calves and the outer calves, releasing any tension in the knees and letting it go. Starting to relax the inner thighs and the outer thighs releasing any tension or tightness and letting it go into the mat. Taking the awareness to the pelvic region and releasing any tightness, softening the hips and the glutes and relaxing the hamstrings, feeling the lower body melt into the mat and taking the awareness to the lower abdomen, relaxing the muscles of the lower abdomen, softening the navel, the upper abdomen, relaxing the chest and allowing it to feel lighter with each exhale, relaxing the shoulders and the area between the neck and the shoulders, starting to relax the biceps and the triceps, the elbows, the forearms, the wrists, the palms, the fingers and the fingertips. Feeling the arms lay back and surrender. Taking the awareness to the spine, relaxing the lower back, the mid back and the upper back. One vertebral column after the other. Starting to relax the back of the neck and the sides of the neck. Releasing any pent up tension you feel there by softening the muscles. Relaxing the skull, 
and the muscles of the head starting to relax, the forehead and the eyebrows, relaxing the area between the two eyebrows, taking the awareness to the eyes, letting the eyeballs fall back into the sockets and keeping the eyelids soft on the eyes, relaxing the nose, the cheeks and the jaws, keeping the mouth soft and letting the tongue fall back into the palate, feeling a state of deep relaxation in the entire body and resting here in Shavasana for a few more moments, maintaining your stillness gently, starting to make yourself aware of the room you're in, making slight movements of the fingertips and the toes, hearing any sounds in your environment and feeling the weight of your body on the mat and allowing that gentle movement of the fingertips and the toes to bring you back to the present moment, gently turning to your left side, supporting the head with the arm and keeping the body in a straight line resting here on your side, maintaining a present state of mind. Not worrying about the past and not thinking about the future. Taking the support of your hands and coming back into a seated posture with your eyes shut. Holding Sukhasan. Keeping the spine straight and taking the hands in Namaste as we begin to chant Om three times. To end our practice, take a deep breath in. Rubbing the palms together and touching the hands to the back of the neck, the head, cupping the eyes, blinking and gently releasing as you open your eyes, feeling absolutely relaxed and renewed. Thank you for practicing with me and see you again for our next session on Yogami.